So, back in 1850, a uh, bit of history, Britain was at war and how to finance the war. And everybody was on personal liability. But people said, I don't think the king's going to be able to pay us back, so we're not going to supply him. So Parliament thought, what's the plan? Can we come up? Let's look through history. Oh yeah, the Greeks, back 2,000 years ago, used this thing called limited liability. We'll protect the rich. So, <coughs> limited liability was brought in for companies in 1856. They started fighting about it uh, already in 1853. And in the parliamentary documents, okay, you had one side saying, we are responsible for our actions, and you had the other side saying, guess what? You're either with us or you're against us. That's where Bush got his words from. 1853 debate in Parliament. That's how it came about. It came about as a temporary measure to win the Crimean War. Who knows when the Crimean War ended? 56. 1856. And the limited liability temporary measure was enacted three months before the Crimean War was won. Right, what is the limited liability about? Okay, the rich said, <laughs> you think we're going to lend you, you know, supply you with arms and boots and all the rest of it, and not get paid and pay out of our pockets, you nuts. So they came up with a scheme, as a shareholder, you can limit your liability to what you lose, and just don't pay your suppliers and your labourers. And that way you can get them, you know, at least some money out of this. And that's what limited liability means. The shareholder, their liability is limited to their shareholding. Okay? Now, a lot of the court cases at the time then went along the view of a trustee. Okay? That's a trust. So you've got a shareholder is the grantor. Okay, you've got the legal fiction company. Okay? And you've got the independent mind, because a company can't act for it, has no being, the directors. So the theory was, if we've got multiple shareholders granting money into the company for a purpose, and we've got multiple directors, okay, because it's multiple directors, we've got a separate mind, not an individual mind controlling. Okay? So therefore, that there got given the legal person with the right to sue and be sued. Because it was not a single person. So, at the time you needed seven. And I think that was five. Or could have been seven. And that makes a bit of rational sense. That you've got a separate mind controlling it. The people that benefit the shareholders, they get the profit. Okay, so they're the beneficiaries of grantor. And that's the concept that it started off as. However, it's a nice little revenue generator because today you need one and one. I just don't see where there's a separate mind anywhere in there. And therefore it's no different from a sole trader but they make shitloads of money selling these things to people. Mm. Okay. And uh, it, it, this here is a massive fraud, but this is where the directors do it. So what they do then also is they make the shareholders literally one company, another company, another company, yeah. another company, yeah. another company. Yeah. So it becomes difficult to find out yes. who's the true yeah. beneficiary. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, this is why they use it, basically, it's an instrument of fraud. Yeah. To me, a trust is an instrument of fraud as well, but if people are too ashamed to show what they've got, then they're hiding in a trust. Well, listen, you know consciously <coughs> why, that there's something wrong with what you've done. So, this is why you, what they've done is, they've said, hang on, not only is the shareholder my, uh, immune, but directors are as well. So, this is what's being enforced in the courts, and that's what I've been challenging. 
Because once we hold directors accountable, then it doesn't matter what it is, 5G, this, that, the other, pharmaceuticals, anything. Once we've got that link done, yeah. that's it. Mm -hmm. The whole system collapses yes. with mm -hmm. the financial control. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm working on separately. So uh, one of the directors was a solicitor. Uh, and so they put in an application against my case. So my statement of case originally was absolute crap, and the judge was absolutely right. But equity prevails over the common law. <coughs> Substance over form. I could speak my case, but I couldn't write it very well. So the judge granted me the, or ordered me, to resubmit in bloody proper simple English without all these Latin quotes and all of these law quotes and all of this crap. Put it in simple English, man, which is what they're meant to do to us. So that's first proof that legalese is nonsense of my experience. So uh, then they, uh, these, uh, the rental company, now what happened was they went bust. So this is 2018. Here the flats were rented out, uh, and here we put the money in, so investors' money. And this was all part of the Great Northern Drive, which was pushed by the government and sold all over the Far East, and over 250 million pounds was lost. And 